Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and yet another superhero video. Today we're going to be talking about two men of steel and a hypothetical match between these two men. We're going to be breaking down Brandon Roof versus Henry Cavill in a hypothetical one versus one. If there's one thing we know about Hollywood and superhero films, it's that they love to reboot movies and do it with different characters and different actors to play those characters. So I thought, hey, why not break down who's the stronger, better version of Superman between these two? But before I get started, I just want to say I am not a mathematician or a physicist. So if my numbers are a little bit off, you're just going to have to deal with it. And please don't take it out on me in the comments below. So with that being said, let's jump right into it and compare these two based on their speed, strength, and X factor. So let's take the scene where he flies in and saves the police officers from the Gatling gun. This particular machine gun is called a BFG XP-50 Mark II and is a fictional 8-barreled minigun which is similar to a GEM-134 which is only a 6-barreled minigun. Seeing as the muzzle velocity on a GEM-134 minigun is about 850 meters per second, we're going to go ahead and use that as a baseline for the BFG XP-50 Mark II and convert that to a rate of about 2800 feet per second. Now that we have the speed of the bullet, we need to figure out how far the bullet it traveled. Assuming Brandon Roof's height of about 6 foot 2 and comparing that to the size of the tiles on the roof, we can assume they're about 3 by 3 feet and counting the number of tiles from the muzzle to the point of impact with Superman's chest, we can approximate that distance to be around 33 to 36 feet that the bullet has traveled. That means that from the time it took the bullet to travel from the muzzle to Superman's chest would be about 0 0.0117 seconds to 0 0.0128 seconds, so we're going to average those out to about 0.012 seconds. I think it's also safe to assume, based on my lack of knowledge of old time Metropolis, that Superman enters the scene about a quarter mile away from when the first bullet leaves the muzzle meaning that he traveled 1,320 feet in about 0.012 seconds. Now using the velocity formula, that would put him at a speed of about 110 feet per second, which is like borderline faster than the Flash moved in the new Justice League trailer. And basically fast enough to where he wouldn't even be seen by the naked eye. So now that we have his speed, we need to calculate his strength. Taking into consideration that he lifted an entire island into orbit and there's not much to compare with in the middle of the ocean, we're going to have to do a lot of approximating here, so bear with me. Now, an average cubic foot of sandstone boulder is approximately 150 pounds per cubic foot, give or take a couple pounds based on the type of rock. We're going to use that since I don't know how dense or heavy kryptonite is. Let's say the island is a cylinder shape more or less. I'm not going to measure every single nook and cranny because I don't even know if that's possible. Hopefully we can agree that the radius of this island is somewhere around a half mile just due to how massive it looks next to a helicopter and also not taking into account all the pieces that chipped off on the way up. And if so, we should be able to agree that the height is around a half mile as well. That would mean that the island has a volume of about 5.78 billion cubic feet. And like I said before, if one cubic foot of solid rock weighs about 150 pounds, that would put this island at a whopping 8.67 trillion pounds, or 4.335 billion tons if you want to cut that number down a little bit. And even if you don't agree with the measurements of the island, the amount of weight is still going to be in the millions to billions of tons range. Given the fact that this island also needs to be accelerated towards space, not just lifted once, and that from sea level to space is about 70 miles, there's no really set boundary for that, Superman was able to do this in about 2 minutes. That means he was able to move the island from a standstill to a rate of about 0.6 miles a second, meaning that he produces a force of 581,376,560,400 newtons to be able to lift the island. To put that in perspective, a rocket only creates about 33.4 million newtons at takeoff. Now that's going to be pretty hard to beat. Now let's talk about Henry Cavill in Batman vs Superman, specifically the scene where he creates a sonic boom, flies in, and blindsides Doomsday. Now to break the sound barrier, you only have to be traveling at about 767 miles per hour, or about 1,125 feet per second. So in this scene, we're also going to start it where Superman is about a quarter mile out, which would be about a block and a half or two away from Doomsday. Now he goes that quarter mile in just about 0.2 seconds, which again using the velocity formula would put his speed at around 6,600 feet per second in that scene, meaning that to the naked eye he is still traveling at a speed that would make him visible. 
fast, but nowhere near as fast as Brandon Ruth. Okay, so now let's talk strength. Even though in real life, Henry Cavill would most likely destroy Brandon Ruth in the weight room, the movies will probably tell a different story. Now, since lifting the kryptonite-filled island basically pushed Brandon Ruth's Superman to his limits, and there hasn't really been a time that Henry Cavill's Superman has been pushed to his absolute limits, besides in Man of Steel when he lifted the fifth of an oil rig and passed out, but he wasn't technically Superman at that point. So we're gonna move along to Batman vs. Superman. I think the most amount of weight we saw him carry in that movie was the Arctic Explorer ship, and he didn't even look like he was struggling, so let's break that down a little bit. First and foremost, this ship is definitely in a cold environment, making me believe that it is an Arctic Explorer ship, and the closest resemblance I could find came in the form of the NS-50 Let Pobody. Now this ship weighs about 26,250 tons without passengers or cargo, assuming the ship sunk and was completely full of water or ice fuel, passengers, and cargo, and also considering the resistance as he was dragging it through the ice, that would bring the weight to somewhere around 40,000 to 60,000 tons, give or take a few tons here and there. Which, no matter how you put it, is still not even close to the island lift. Again, advantage Brandon Ruth. Now here comes the controversial topic of X Factor. Brandon Ruth's Superman lifted an entire island full of kryptonite, and Henry Cavill's Superman has taken a whole nuke and then flew with kryptonite in his hand just minutes later to ram it through Doomsday's heart while also being rammed through in his heart. So no matter who plays the Man of Steel, you can always count on him to fight until his last breath to protect the people and Earth he loves. So if you had to pit these two against each other, for whatever reason, you can't really calculate a winner even though one candidate looks extremely more efficient on paper because at the end of the day they both wouldn't give up until the job was done. It'd be like an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. And what happens then? <laughs> they surrender. But I do suppose if you had to pick a stronger, faster Superman, well, the evidence kind of speaks for itself. Now I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. Who do you think would win in a fight between these two? Do you think Henry Cavill would come up on top? Do you think Brandon Ruth would come out on top? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to click that like and subscribe button for more videos every week. Thanks again so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next one.